Okay, we're gonna get started into the second video. Whoops, sorry about that. There we go. And the second video now is gonna get into the central nervous system. Uh, I hope that you are getting into your book and starting to read that chapter too because it really, really will help you to help understand um, about how the neuron works and operates. This, it's very, it's somewhat detailed. The terminology is somewhat difficult because maybe words or terms that you now have heard of before. Uh, so by reading it, I think in your book and then listening to the video, um, the presentation, and then maybe going back and either rereading part of your textbook or watching the video maybe one more time or the, the slideshow, the presentation, I think it would really would help you. I know that's going to take some time, but um, if you really want to do well in this unit, you're, you're going to need to put a little bit of extra time on because it is a very challenging and, and I think it's a somewhat more difficult unit. Uh, so what we're going to get into here now is the central nervous system. The first video was on the peripheral nervous system. That is... Uh, basically dealing with your body and how your thoughts, actions, and your um, emotions all play into a key role into how we act, how we think, and basically how we feel. And so when we have those horrible bad days and you know we're throwing stuff around or we're moping around and, and all of that, and our bodies are showing those kinds of signs and, and that, then that is what's going on inside of us. Okay, that's the emotions taking place, that's our thoughts that's causing those things, and then it shows those outward behaviors. And that's all your peripheral nervous system doing that. When that information from your peripheral nervous system shoots up into your brain then, for, the, for it to be interpreted and processed, that is your central nervous system. So that's what we're going to get into now, is getting into talking about what exactly is this thing called the central nervous system. It's basically made up of billions upon billions of these items here that you see. These are called neurons, okay? And there are many of them, and we're going to get into talking about those uh, quite a bit. The neurons that makes up your brain, and it puts it all together, um, how the structure of the brain is created, uh, you have this glue-like substance inside your brain. It's called the glia. Uh, this is found throughout the brain. And if you've ever dissected a brain or you you know go to chemistry class or I guess it would be more uh, anatomy class or something and you see the, the uh, professor there cutting up a brain, if you've ever gone through that, you'll notice this very sticky kind of substance that is coming off of the brain. That is the glia. The purpose of the glee is many, many things, and you're really going to need to know a couple of these when it comes to the test. One, the glee helps with communication. Um, it's kind of like that it helps to foster uh, the communication by being able to easily send the information from one neuron to another, and it helps in that transmitting of communication of, of information then. Uh, it also supplies nourishment. Now the nourishment that the brain needs, and you guys already all know this, but uh, the nourishment that the brain needs in order to survive is it has to have oxygen and it must have blood. Uh, and those two things are very important. But there are some other nourishments too that the glia provides for, such things as water. Uh, believe it or not, your brain soaks up a tremendous amount of water. Uh, and that's why one of the things that when you become dehydrated, it becomes much more difficult to think clearly is because your brain is basically like a sponge being soaked up and it's becoming much more harder to get information through the brain then. Your glia helps provide that nourishment to keep your brain at the proper level of being able to to use your thought process and those kinds of things. Uh, it also removes waste. Now the waste in your brain uh, is basically the dead cells and every day you have uh, hundreds of uh, those neuron cells in your brain that are dying uh, or parts of the cell which should be the synapse that becomes no longer needed or usable and it dies out. This would be kind of the synapse here, these parts that stick out to the sides here. Um, so sometimes the whole neuron dies and sometimes just parts of it dies. But what happens is the glia then has to remove that, those dead neurons out of the brain and get rid of them. If not, those dead neurons then, if a neuron touches another neuron, and that's something none of these neurons can do. None of them touch each other at all. If they would touch, they would kind of self-destruct each other because of the electrical and the chemical uh, 
messages or pieces that goes through them um, it you know kind of like a magnet it just would demagnetize but in this case when one neuron touches another it causes them to almost you know in other words blow up sort of uh, and they destroy each other so those dead neurons then uh, become kind of free floating and they could actually bump up against or touch another neuron which is going to cause that to die and then a massive amount of these is going to cause a tumor in your brain or a cyst and so that's why the glia gets rid of that then uh, another part of the brain or the neuron that's very important then is the known as the cell body which is called the soma this contains the nucleus which is kind of like the computer chip of a neuron that's where all of the information is stored and the processing takes place so you can think of you know this neuron if you want to try to visualize it maybe think of it as a computer like a laptop or something and the outside part of the laptop there the hard part of it the casing that would be your soma uh, and then inside where you have the guts of the computer the the motherboard and that that's going to be that nucleus and so the soma protects it the problem is you drop a you know your laptop and and uh, or you know you drop your cell phone and it cracks and breaks you know they're not very sturdy either is the soma so it's very easy for that nucleus to get damaged if uh, for example you hit your head or you you know uh, not just necessarily in sports and in football but you hear this all the time but even just walking and slipping and falling and banging your head you're doing damage to your brain because that rattling around of the brain which moves it is enough to cause some of those neurons to spark and hit each other which causes them to blow out Okay, so uh, first you got the soma, and that's what this is here. There's a picture of the soma kind of sticking out there, and your book has some really good pictures of it as well. Uh, from there then, uh, from the soma and where the nucleus is stored at, you get into now the extensions from the soma, and these extensions look like big branches kind of sticking out. If you notice, it kind of looks like a tree there. Those are called dendrites, okay? And the purpose of a dendrite is nothing more but to receive information. That's all it does. Only time information comes in, it comes down the dendrite to the to the soma into the nucleus where it's processed okay never does any information come back up a dendrite it's always pulling in information so again to, to go back to my to my scenario there of the computer think of that big cord that sticks out of the computer and basically what that computer is doing is sucking in energy through that cord uh, that's being plugged in and it's bringing that, inf that energy and that information into the computer. That's what a dendrite does. It only brings it in. It doesn't send it back out. Now once information is brought in a dendrite, the nucleus then takes that information, processes it, decides yes it's important, we need to send this on to another neuron. So then it sends it down a really long cord and this is called the axon. And the purpose of the axon is to transmit signals away from the nucleus towards another neuron. The axon here is a highway system, and it's very important. Along this axon, you have a fatty white substance that wraps around the axon. It's a very thick substance known as the myelin sheath. This actually acts as a, a ability to help speed speed up the travel of the signal of the information going from the neuro, the one neuron to the next. The more fatty substance, this myelin sheath that's wrapped around the neuron, around the axon, I'm sorry, it, it helps speed it up even more. So for some of us whose myelin, we have a lot of myelin sheath wrapped around our axons inside of our brain, we have, remember, billions of these neurons, that's why some of us can speed through and get information very quickly. You know, for some of you guys out there right now who are listening to the video, you know, you're getting this one time and boom, you got it. Okay, you pick this stuff up and you have it and you can come to class and you can recite this because you have that 200 mile an hour processor. You have a very quick processing brain. For some of us, I'm included in this, I'm the two miles per hour. I have to read, reread, reread, reread again in order for me to get something. I my myelin sheath is not very thick, obviously, because it takes me a lot longer to process. Now this has nothing to do with intelligence. This has to do with your ability to process information and send it on down the road. Now once that information does get sent from the axon here, it goes to the very tip or the end of the axon, which is called the terminal buttons. And at the terminal buttons, buttons they will secrete these chemicals from it called neurotransmitters their job is to jump from the synapse terminal button across 
what's called the synaptic junction or synaptic cleft to the other neuron. Remember, a neuron cannot touch. So it has to actually jump from one neuron to the next. That's what these neurotransmitters do. That's their job. And inside of them is the message that you're trying to get. So right now, as you're listening to this and getting the notes down and stuff, you're trying to learn this stuff, okay? As you're doing this, your brain is taking this information as you're reading it and as you're hearing it and as you're kind of focusing on it, hopefully, and it's trying to process it and create you a memory in order for you to remember this. But it doesn't take one neuron to do this or two. It takes thousands upon thousands, building all at the one time, creating it into a memory. And if anywhere along this process, from one neuron to the other, messes up, or you all of a sudden... You look away, or you start texting, or you're doing whatever else you're doing, you lost all the information, it's gone. And that's why you have to learn to focus for the short period of time of the videos. You've got to focus in and not be doing other stuff, because otherwise you're not going to make the memory then. Okay, finally then, kind of getting into how this axon works even more, and this is a really good picture of it here. You can kind of see it, although it's red, not white, on the myelin sheath. But that information goes from the nucleus, and it shoots it on down here through the terminal, uh, I'm sorry, through the axon, to the terminal buttons here, which you can see. And basically how this works, how this information gets shot, it's all done through electricity. You have inside of the axon here negatively charged ions. These negatively charged ions are called chloride. Outside of the axon, you have positively charged ions called sodium and potassium. When there's nothing going on in the ion and the neuron, these ions are just kind of hanging out. You got the positive charge ions outside of the axon. You got the negative charge on ions inside, just like a car battery. When it's sitting there and you don't have the car turned on, the positive and negatively charged battery part is just sitting there. When you flip the switch and when it sparks, that's what happens with your brain. The myelin sheath opens up, the, neg the positively charged ions flood into the negatively charged axon, and basically the voltage switches, causing a charge, causing a spark, and it shoots that message on through then. How much and how fast does it do it? It all depends upon the charge that goes through here with that myelin sheath then, causing the, sh the shooting of the voltage of the charge for that message to get through. There's three stages that this happens in. The first is called the resting potential. This is basically, like I said, you got the negatively charged ions sitting here, the positively charged ions on the outside. Then you got the action potential. This is basically where you have the stimulation occurs, the positively charged ions rush in, the action potential shifts the neuron into an electrical charge. Once that information is shot through the axon and it heads to the terminal buttons, then the axon has to rest, just like firing a gun. If I shoot a gun, the bullet goes through the chamber, shoots out, and then I have to wait just a fraction of a second in order to shoot the next bullet. Okay, That period of wait is called the refractory period. It's the length of time after the action potential when another action potential can be done. The last thing to talk about in this video here is to remember it's an all or nothing law when it comes to this action potential. Okay? If my if the nucleus says send this information and you're processing it, you're concentrating, you're building a memory of all this information right now and you're trying to get all these neurons to collect together to build a memory and that information shooting through that axon, okay? The axon won't stop. Once that information shot just like a bullet through a gun, it will not stop and go back. It's an all or nothing law. Okay, uh, the rate of firing depends upon the strength of the message. Again, if you're sitting here right now and you're kind of in and out of consciousness, in and out of fo focusing attention to the slide here and what's going on, you're not getting this stuff. You have a very slow firing, probably almost to the point of it not even doing it at all, and you're not going to get this. You've got to be concentrating. The more you concentrate, the faster and more potentially strengthening the information gets shot through. All right, we are going to watch a video on this, and we're going to go through this and, and go through some examples of it uh, in class and stuff, but you just need to make sure you get this so you can kind of understand how that whole process works. Okay, what I want you to do now, okay, is you have this slide in your note packet, in your video sheet, or I'm sorry, in your... Um, 
uh, slides, what I want you to do is just take a moment and see if you can quiz yourself and try to write down what is the name of each one of these parts of a neuron. See if you can do that without looking it up, without having to go back and do that, and see how well you've been listening to the presentation then, and kind of give yourself a little check to see how you did.